Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Brief Programming. This is episode four remake. I'm actually gonna be redoing the episode four video. The last one that I uploaded uh, is just not good. I apologize for that if you watched it. If you haven't, uh, I'm happy that you don't have to see it. Basically, I just left the camera on in the video uh, and it was really bothering me. So I wanna go ahead and redo it, take the time to do it. Today I'm gonna be releasing episode four and episode five. So this is Wednesday. You should get two videos this week. Uh, you'll get three videos this week. Another one on Saturday, but we'll Today on Wednesday I'll be releasing this one as, as well as uh, episode 5. So this is episode 4 remake. Uh, and we're going to cover the same things in the original episode 4. We're going to look at the ability class and the creature class. More so the creature class. Uh, we're going to be setting up and playing around with a little bit of coroutines. Before we move, move on to a little bit more of AI stuff. Uh, but first, uh, your game or your project is going to look a little different than mine. Uh, if you're continuing on from episode 3. Uh, basically, what I've done is I've just moved around the uh, top, the menus here. I just drag the scene view down. It creates a little bit more room for me to work. Allows me to use the scene view to debug as well as the game view, uh, and allows me to expand. I, I just basically uh, duplicated the platforms over here. But if you if you go over to the hierarchy, hit Control D, you can duplicate a platform uh, and make several of them. And that's what I did down here in the scene view, just so I have more of an area to play around with and test on. I also added this green slime character. Uh, it has a creature script, which I'm actually going to remove that. Um, so we, I have the green slime character, which you'll be able to find on the GitHub page, which, by the way, uh, I've re-uploaded the GitHub. It was not working. It actually deleted some of my stuff, so I apologize for that. Uh, the GitHub should have every updated information on it, and as well, there is another link down in the description below for uh, a Google Drive page that has the same project. And again, all this is for free for you guys to use, do whatever you want with it. It's all, it's all for you guys. Do whatever you want with it. Uh, you do not need to contribute to me at all. Uh, but again, those will be in the description below, the links for that. Uh, so that's basic setup, right? We have a cr green slime, an enemy. It could just be a square. It doesn't have to be anything. We're not really going to play around with it. I just wanted it to represent an enemy. That's why I dragged it in. Uh, but really what we're going to be doing today is working in the creature class. So first, uh, what we want to do now is click the creature class, open that up into uh, Visual Studio. I'm going to hit Control to save, and uh, we'll go ahead and talk about where we're at right now. So in our creature class, if if you remember, this is our base class, right? For our monsters and for our player, uh, everything has all of this, right? It has health. It has a way to adjust health by adding or subtracting. We're gonna have some sort of uh, a list, a collection of abilities, and we're gonna be using coroutines to do our attack in our idle in our death. Uh, handling our logic really because this is a pretty simple game we're not going to get really in depth with uh, AI uh, but this will give you a start for all your projects that you're working on outside of this platformer tutorial so this will definitely uh, work with the unity RPG series that we have been working on as well so let's just jump right in and start start talking about coroutines if you've never used a coroutine I recommend going to the Unity page documentation and reading up on it a little bit. I definitely have a couple videos on coroutines. We use them quite a bit in the ability system, which is the last thing we were working on in the RPG series. Uh, I will say this as a preface to all this: when you start using coroutines in Unity, it can be very overwhelming if you're not if you don't understand how they work, uh, and if you just it, it takes a while to play around with them. But I'll try my best to kind of explain what's going on, what's happening. Uh, the biggest thing you'll run into is when you start playing with coroutines, at least for me, as I was running into uh, infinite while loops that were just causing Unity to freeze up and I'd have to go into the processes and restart them all. It's just a pain, but once you start getting them down, uh, that the pains go away and, and you start realizing how powerful and how great they are to use and you'll start using them more and more. Uh, with having said all that, let's go ahead and start. So we're going to be looking at the idle, uh, our little idle comment here. We know that we want our player to be idle when we start, right? Or our creature, anything. We want it to start idle for the most part. We don't want it to be doing anything. We want it to sit still or search or whatever it may be. So we're going to call that idle. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a public, uh, another virtual so we can override it in the uh, upper classes if we need to. It's going to be another IE numerator, and we're going to call it idle, just like we did the attack. Uh, but this is not going to take any arguments. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and say yield return null, right? 
And what this is doing, this is going to exit out of our, our loop. So if I just, or our coroutine. So if I said start coroutine idle and it starts it, it's just going to immediately exit and it's not going to do anything. Uh, but that's okay because we can add some logic in it and that's what we're going to do right now. So one thing you'll see a lot of people do and what we're going to do now is create a while loop for our uh, for our coroutines. Uh, and we're going to say while is idle, which we haven't created yet, is true, right? So we're going to leave it as is true. And we're going to do something. Now, like I said, is idle has not been created. It's a variable that doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to highlight it, double click on it, I'm going to hit Control C to copy. I'm going to come up to the top and we're going to create a public variable. And it's going to be a bool. And we're going to call it is idle. And I'm going to set it equal to true. Now, the reason why I made this public for now, we're going to set it back to uh, private later on. Uh, we made it public so we can look at it in the inspector because we're going to use it for testing. Uh, and I recommend doing that, uh, keeping some variables public if it makes it easier for you to test your, your game design and stuff, and then later uh, reducing its or restricting its protection later on if, as you need to uh, when the game gets closer to be released. Uh, but here we have a public bool, and now we can go back. We got rid of that error. Now we have a while loop. The while loop does nothing, and at this point, Unity will crash because it hates just an infant while loop. It gets stuck in here. It can't do anything. It's not returning. It's not doing anything. So what we're going to add is one line uh, yield, and this is these, this is kind of what makes these coroutines very power or more powerful than normal methods. You can say yield return new wait for, and we can wait a certain amount of time. Uh, so we're going to wait 0.5 float right. So this is in seconds. Point fly. Oh, excuse me. Let me go ahead and get rid of that semicolon. 0.5 seconds. So half a second, we're going to sit in this loop and then we're going to restart the loop. And we're going to sit in this loop and restart the loop. Every half second, it's going to do that until is idle is false. Uh, we're going to add a debug statement to help prove that we're actually doing this. And we're going to use this, meaning this script, game object. So we're going to get the game object that this script is attached to. And then we're going to get its name. Uh, we're going to add a plus and then two uh, quotation marks to create a string. We're going to hit space and we're going to say is idle. And this is going to announce to our uh, console that whatever game object this script happens to be attached to, it's going to get its name and it's going to tell us that it's idle. Uh, now, like I said, we're going to sit in this loop until is idle is false. As soon as it, it is not false, we want to announce again in our console that we are no longer idle. So I'm going to copy and paste this debug statement and I'm going to say is space not idle. So we know that we're not idle. And as soon as that happens, we're going to exit out of this uh, coroutine and this yield return null is going to uh, stop our coroutine and get rid of it. So it's not going to run in the background. The last thing that we need to do before we can test any of this bit of code is we need to uh, look at our awake method here. In a standard uh, Unity script that you create in C Sharp or I think in Java too, or the JavaScript and uh, I think even in Boo, uh, you have your awake method or you have your start method and an update method. Awake is another one of those modern behavior methods. Um, awake starts every object that has an awake method that is turned on when the game starts. Everything in that method will run, excuse me, at the beginning, at the be very beginning of the very first frame. So be careful of how much you put in this because it can really bog down uh, your game at the very beginning. Uh, but for this, it's okay. So we're going to say start coroutine, and we're going to pass in the idle method, or the idle coroutine, and we're going to hit uh, semicolon to end it. So here we have start coroutine idle. It's going to come up here to our coroutine. It's going to start it. We're going to enter the while loop, uh, and then in our inspector, we'll, we'll set is idle to false, and we should exit our idle loop. So now that we have all that controls to save, go into Unity. I'm going to click my green slime over here. I'm going to drag the creature script to it. We should see in the inspector panel we have the is idle toggle. I'm going to set it equal to true. If all goes well, I'm going to hit play and hopefully it won't freeze. It didn't freeze. You can see in the console here we're saying is idle every half second. As soon as I toggle that, we'll exit out of it. We're not idle anymore and we've exited the loop. Uh, now if I hit it again, nothing's going to happen, right? Because it's, we're not telling it to do that, so we need to tell it to enter it back somehow, and that's the, where the attack method is going to come into play. So the last thing that we'll do in this video uh, in episode four is we're going to talk about how we can use the idle method to enter the attack uh, method or coroutine to use an ability. And the way we do that is very simple. And so I'm going to get rid of this debug statement here uh, that is not idle one, and we're going to call start coroutine attack. And hope this works. 
Well, if you haven't caught it, we have a problem. Attack won't work because it requires an ability. The one way to do this is you can go ahead and do abilities, which is our list of abilities, and index, send an index number, so zero, right? It'll get the first ability within that list and pass it in. Well, we haven't created any abilities and we haven't really initialized our list yet, so we can't do that. That'll throw an error. And so what we're gonna do to handle that is we're gonna say ability, capital A, AB uh, is equal to a new one. So we're just gonna create a new instance of an ability and we're going to call it AB and we're going to pass that to attack. And this is just going to allow us to uh, pass an object to attack so that that start coroutine uh, call will work. At that point when we call that method we're going to enter uh, the attack coroutine. We're going to create a debug statement uh, as soon as we enter. Oh, control C. Uh, as soon as we enter we're going to say this game object is attacking. I use these uh, debug statements just for testing but when you when you release something you can get rid of them but they're very helpful for testing make sure all your loops and all that stuff work properly uh, so anyways we're gonna say is attacking we're gonna use the ability and then we're gonna exit the loop now before we exit the loop we need to set is idle equal to true because as soon as it exits it's false and it will just come in here and sit and not do anything so we're gonna set is idle to true here equals true uh, and we're, we're basically done well, actually, one more thing. We need to go ahead and start the coroutine again, idle, so it knows to enter back idle. And one thing I would like to do is copy this. And just to know that we've used our ability, we're going to go into our ability class. And under the comment here, we're going to hit uh, enter and then enter the debug statement and say, uh, we'll do ability used. And we'll just highlight that and delete it. There we go, ability used. Uh, so when we call ab.use, it's gonna actually just go ahead and call to the console and say, hey, ability was used. At that point, we're gonna set is idle back to true and we're gonna start the idle coroutine and we should be back in this is idle loop if all goes well. Hit controls to save, go back into Unity and we'll test it out and see if it all works. Hopefully we didn't get any bugs. Looks like we're doing all right. If I go into the console, you say, hey, we're idle, we're idle, we're idle. I'm going to hit this checkbox over here in the inspector and it's going to immediately attack and it's going to turn back on. Uh, and then I'll pause the console to look. So we hit it. You see there's a split second where it went off and came back on. If I go to the console, we can see, hey, is idle. Then we attack, the ability was used, and then we went back to idle. Uh, and that's a basic logic that we're going to be using for this project. I just want to get you guys started with a very basic setup of it. We're going to go more in depth on how we can use, uh, or really how we can trigger the attack method and not just tell it, you know, we don't want a, a toggle button for it to attack. We want it to logically come up with the reason why we should attack, right? And that's what we're going to cover in episode five. So hopefully you guys learned something. Again, this project's available down in the description below for you to download off of Google Drive or GitHub. Uh, if you got any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys next time.